our first question is from Uthman, and he says, do we regard and treat the disbelievers who are citizens of the same country with us as Ahlul Dhimma, notwithstanding the country is regrettably a non-Sharia practicing nation of near equal Muslim Christian uh, domination. Now, the question of Uthman has a lot of implications that we have to understand. And it's a very important question, may Allah reward him, uh, that he brought light uh, uh, into this issue. First of all, the disbelievers who live in our country, the Muslim country, they either are Dhimmi or Mu'ahid or Harbi and other categories. So those who are Dhimmi, those who are living among us might carry the same nationality and Islamically they're obliged to give taxation only on the men. Females, uh, children, elderly are exempted. Those who are working and earning, they're requested to pay a very minimal fee of taxation in return of us giving them full protection. If any army would to invade the country, they're not requested to fight with us. Only the Muslims are told to fight and they have to fight in defense of these uh, 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 around us. Uh, a mu'ahad is someone who has a treaty between us and them. So he comes for a period of time and there is a treaty signed by the Muslims giving him uh, uh, a safe haven, he can live for a period of time. And this is like the expats who come for five years, 10 years, 15 years contract to do something in the Muslim country. Al-Harbi is a person who is between us and them, there is war taking place. So this person does not have any kind of treaty or uh, uh, peace between us and them. So now uh, Uthman is asking about those who are dhimmis, ahlu dhimma, those who pay the taxation. Now, his question is important because it gives you a background of how some people think. Why is he asking such a question? He's saying, do we have to treat them uh, and uh, deal with them in regard uh, of these disbelievers in the same fashion that the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu salam, bearing in mind that the country is a non-Sharia practicing country. So they do not implement Sharia law. What does this mean? Usually when someone refers to a country that it is non-Sharia compliant or they're not implementing Sharia law, this usually, not always, huh? usually gives the idea or the point of view that the ruler is a kafir because he's not implementing Sharia law. And this is in accordance to uh, chapter 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 44, 40, uh, uh, where Allah says, and whoever does not implement or rule with the law of law, then those are the kafir, the disbelievers. So it's an issue of dispute among scholars in regards of implementation. Theoretically, there are lots of uh, uh, views about it. But when you come to practice and you want to look a realistic way at the Muslim countries nowadays, the vast majority don't implement Sharia law. And this is well established and well known. So do we give them takfir or not? Now here is where feet slip. It's a slippery ground that you're walking on. It's a very fine, thin line. And there is a difference between theoretically giving uh, uh, verdicts and rulings and implementing it on uh, uh, the road. You find people coming on YouTube and they start bombarding all rulers of the Muslims as kafir because of this ayah. But there is an ayah afterwards, an ayah afterwards, it says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمْ الظَّالِمُونَ the Transgressors and also الفاسقون, the sinners. So why did you pick the first one and immediately labeled anyone who does not rule with Allah's law to be a kafir. I'm not belittling the issue of ruling other with other than Allah's law. This is a major issue. It can nullify your Islam.
If you think that your man-made law is better than Sharia law, you're a kafir. Even if you pray not five times a day, 50 times a day. If a person thinks that it is not better, it's equivalent. Then he's a kafir as well. Because nothing comes close to Allah's law. But if a person believes that the law of Allah is the best, but due to weakness, due to his fear uh, uh, over his throne or over his power, he implements other than the law of Allah, this is an issue of dispute. And it seems that he is not a kafir. And we cannot label him as a kafir. Therefore, if we know the background, when we come to our brother Uthman's question, and he says that should we treat them Ahl al because they don't pay jizya and the country is not uh, 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 ruled by the Sharia. So in this case, I have my doubts. The answer is, Akhi, this is way be above yours and my pay grade. This is something only the scholars, the real scholars of the Ummah can collaborate and judge. Basically speaking, from what we see, what ensures the safety of the Muslims and of the community is that it's not to you or to me to take a decision. Now this disbeliever living in my country, whether he's paying jizya or not, this is up to the Muslim ruler. It's his duty, it is his call. Now, if he does not implement Sharia, but he's still a Muslim. Otherwise, it is, uh, uh, we will be giving uh, blanket takfir for everybody. So if he's a Muslim and we give him benefit of the doubt, we try our level best to implement Sharia, to give him advice, to work here and there, giving da'wah, etc. But this doesn't change anything that this kafir, this disbeliever, this Christian or this Jew living on my soil is to be treated as the Prophet Islam told us to treat them in a nice fashion because he has a treaty with the ruler of the country and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.